Next up, the final of the men's double skulls, the Olympic and world champion Slovenia, with one half of the winning partnership, Luka Spick, in lane one. The other half, of course, it's Doc Chop, having already finished second to Olaf Tufte earlier in the day in the men's single skulls. Well, there's Spick sitting in front of his partner for today. This is Davo Mizarit, and uh, they've got a tough job to hold on to this world title. Then the Cubans, this is Martinez and Hernandez. They've done really well. They were 12th in Sydney and are improving. In lane three for Germany, the two Steffens, Volkert and Rohnert, very experienced men. However, Ruder Sport, the German magazine, reckons that they're likely to finish only second to these two men on their left. This is Akos Halla in the bow and Tibor Peto sitting in front of him. They were fifth in Sydney, but they also have made giant strides in the last 12 months. France, Adrien Hardy in the bow, seventh in Sydney with Frederick Cowell, now partnered by Sebastian Vierdon. And closest to us, Italy, represented by one half of the quartet that took Olympic gold in the quadruple skulls. That's Alessio Sartori, behind him, Rosano Galtarossa. Well, Hungary in the middle there have won all their World Cup races and the World Cup. Very, very good double. They've been knocking on the door now for quite a while. Been together a long time. Maybe well front runners, but I would tip Italy perhaps to be the ones to push them. Very experienced scholars from Italy. Uh, gold medalists in Sydney in the quadruple skulls. And rowing that very, very, sculling that very distinctive Italian way. Hard legs down and then the back picking it up to the second part of the stroke. Well, I think I'm going to disagree with you, uh, Dan. I'm going to stick with the Hungarians. They've done absolutely nothing wrong. They're very much the partnership to beat here, and uh, I think they will be very difficult to beat once they get there noses in front so to speak they're just establishing their rhythm three from the bottom of your picture but at the moment uh, with the early lead it's the germans volkart and Rohnert, who also represent a good deal of experience yes very very experienced i mean they've, they've uh, in in the in the quadruple certainly uh, volkart stefan volkart was uh, a great great um, um uh, scholar winning a whole series of medals over the last five or six years uh, but they've not been going all that well. I'm not sure how fit they are, but certainly uh, this first 500 is showing them moving very well indeed up to the 500 meter mark. Yes, they go through there. Stefan Volkert, uh, as you said, Dan, uh, so successful. Two Olympic gold medals in the German quad in 92 and 96. The Germans, of course, only third in the Olympic quadruple skulls. So Volkert back in the double with uh, Viardon who was fourth in the Olympics in the double skull. I'm very surprised to see how far Italy have dropped off the pace in the first 500. They're lying last at the moment, almost a length down on the field, just completely out of it. So bang goes my, my idea that they might have been uh, up there pressing Hungary. Hungary certainly were the fastest qualifiers um, uh, this week and uh, in the semi-finals, and uh, they must be the... Uh, the favourites, but it's now Germany looking quite strong, moving very nicely out in front, boat running very well, very upright style. They're upright, they sit there and get it in nicely behind the riggers, but they're two very, very big men, and they don't have to really stretch out too far to get the length. Coached by uh, Norbert Ladermann, these two Germans, and uh, it's uh, really youth and experience. Sebastian only 23, uh, Stefan, of course, 30 years of age. As we go across to the Slovenians, who are in lane one, and this is tough, Dan, for Luka Spick, because uh, Itstock Chop is such a fantastic partner. He's grown up with Itstock, really, so no disrespect to Davor, but this is a tough call for them to hold on to the title. Well, Chop, uh, I asked him earlier on in the, uh, in the year whether he was going to be uh, doing the double skull again. He said, no, no, I'm going only for the single. I've had enough of doubling. So uh, he was clearly uh, not going to be involved in this double skull and defending his title. So Germany now just relinquishing to uh, France there, who were the most effective during that second quarter. Adrien Hardy and uh, Sebastien Viardon. Sebastien, who... Uh, has his birthday tomorrow, 25, so he'd like to obviously get a medal to really celebrate. These two relatively uh, inexperienced, both men in their early 20s, coached by Jean-Raymond Pelletier. 
Well, this is a very, very good uh, effort from France. They've been moving very well indeed. And uh, look at that sitting there with Hungary now beginning to try and get back on terms. Hungary been going quite quietly in the middle, uh, in this middle thousand, but they're beginning to pick it up. There's such a nice, technically uh, proficient double. They're moving very sweetly, but France really have taken this race to them and are moving very, very sweetly indeed. Completely different now, this combination from last year's combination, which, uh, which didn't make it quite so well in, uh, in Sydney. But this is a very, very good turnaround from France, looking very well. Hungary having to fight very hard now to get back on turns. Yes, the Italians have got a little bit of work to do as we see the French here. It was Hardy and Cowell who didn't make the final. They were seventh at the end of the Olympic regatta. But now the Hungarians, who, as you said, Dan, they've been quiet, they've been economical, and now they're just easing their way into the lead. And I, I think easing is exactly the right word. Yes, they've done that very imperceptibly, haven't they? They've just crept up and crept by and moved out after half a leg. They've done it very, very well, very effectively, with just enough time there, 500 metres, to enjoy the last 500 metres home uh, out in front. And having said that, a, a little renaissance for the Italians. Your tip, they've moved up into the bronze medal position and are coming home a little quicker than they started. Well, I would have expected it, but uh, my goodness, they, they moved rather without us noticing in lane six there. We didn't see them at all, but they certainly moved very well in the uh, second, third, 500 from sixth up, and to, up to third. Now, look how close they've come now to France. They've, they've come so far in such a short space of time, and they're now only half a length down on France. France still holding on to Hungary. Hungary haven't got away. They're not able to sit there and enjoy it. They're having to race for their medals, and there they are, those three with Italy still coming, Italy coming strong. And worth a note on the far side, we'll just catch uh, how close the Cubans are to the front three. They're not going to get a medal, but this is a terrific effort from the Cubans over on the far side in lane number two. But it's Hungary as we come into the enclosures who lead from France and Italy. Latin America really coming on with Argentina and Cuba doing so well, but it's certainly Hungary now. And the Hungary are not going to get caught, but are Italy going to catch France for the bronze medal? My goodness, they're coming up. They're up to 44 strokes a minute, and they are moving through. This is a fantastic finish here by the Italians. Can the French respond now? There's no doubt who is moving fastest of all as we come to the line. The angle again is deceptive. The Italians and the French are locked together. The Hungarians are going to get the gold, and the French have just got back to deny the Italians. I think the Italians might have had the second or the silver medal position for a moment, but then the French found that little bit extra, but the Hungarians...